Alexander Volkanovsky, what, seventh title fight in a row? And he faces what some are calling his biggest test to date. Now, AJ, I don't know if this is his biggest test. I don't know if Yair Rodriguez would be the toughest test that he has faced, but I do think it's going to be one of the most unexpected matchups in terms of you don't know what is going to happen with the Yair Rodriguez fight. Half the times, Yair probably doesn't even know it's calculated, but it's unpredictable. He might throw something in that flow state that we get in, and anybody can get caught. Now, we have to be realistic here. Alexander Volkanovsky, I think, has earned our respect enough to the point where minus 420 favorite at open, respectable, right? Oh, very respectable. Uh, I mean, especially with this man's hit list alone, Derek, it's hard to not give him that kind of credit. I would agree 100%, but at the same time, you do go into this matchup, at least if you're me, a little fearful, right? I do think Yair Rodriguez has the capacity to upset, especially coming off of a steamrolling victory against Josh Emmett the way that he did. But here's the thing, man. Volkanovski has this uncanny knack to not only beat you where you're best at, which I'm not sure that's the best idea against Rodriguez, but he can neutralize your game plan given he is so well-rounded. He is almost, and I don't, I mean, this is, might be not the most apt comparison given how their careers have lined up, but he's like the Robert Whitaker of the featherweight division, kind of. I mean, would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, f- uh, Luck has favored him a little bit more in the fights he's been in as far as uh, Bobby Knuckles, but I would agree. He is, Alexander Volkanovsky is the better fighter, more well-rounded fighter, but that's, we say it all the time, Derek, the better fighter does not always win on fight night, Mm -hmm. and I think the X factor that Yair Rodriguez has that you're talking about, where he doesn't even really know what he's going to do, yeah, he's drilled it, he's drilled the upward elbows, he's drilled the double spinning kicks, all that stuff. If the game plan of Alexander Volkanovsky happens, he's going to win. But that X factor can come at any point, and that is the danger right here. And that's the, that's what I think you're tapping into as well. Mm-hmm. You know, there's something that I was just thinking about right now. And it's like obvious when you're like going through your fight prep. But is it not a little weird that there's a lot of this hype on your Yair Rodriguez right now? De- deservedly so. Dude is a stud. He's a fantastic fighter. But is it not a little odd that you lose to Max Holloway? You get a win over Brian Ortega where he gets injured and the fight's done. And then you steamroll Josh Emmett and all of a sudden you're the number one guy. You're the guy that everyone's clamoring about. Do you find anything strange in that or do you think all of this hype truly is deserved? Uh, Well, so I think that's a little bit of two different questions because, yes, I think the the hype is deserved. Um, uh, Rodriguez is very... Uh, what's what I'm looking for, like explosive. He has the it factor that would draw a crowd. He has the Mexican fandom pushing him as well. So there's a big draw for him. So I do think the credit is is deserved, Derek. But as far as the storyline, you can never trust the storyline with the UFC. I didn't want to bring it up yet because there's other ones that are coming through yeah. with storyline as well. And it seems to be this is when the mecca of all of that hits or yeah. subsides at least because – yeah, it's a, it is an interesting way the cards unfolded for Yair Rodriguez having that L to Max Holloway. Yeah. But again, fourth fight, fifth fight, are we going to keep seeing these keep going on in the UFC? I don't know. Well, I guess my whole point of why I bring this up in the first place is simply because, as you had mentioned, the UFC needs to build a story to build a fight, right? And if you're Yair Rodriguez, you're all of a sudden the big boogeyman, the biggest test to Alexander Volkanovsky, when in reality, it's probably a little closer to... Oh, man, don't you think Duplessis could beat Adesanya? It's like he's the only guy left. It's like Volkanovski beat everybody else. So obviously you make the the new guy the biggest, baddest guy. Not to take anything away from Yair Rodriguez, I just think Volkanovski has dominated his, his division in Amanda Nunez fashion, Shevchenko fashion, Usman fashion after so long, you know, that type of stuff. So we could touch more on that a little bit, but let's just dive into the X's and O's, man. Realistically, Yair Rodriguez is dangerous on the feet. He's dangerous standing up. But Alexander Volkanovsky, especially coming off of that fight against Islam Makashev, I think it's pretty clear that it's going to be tough to submit Volkanovsky or to beat him up on the feet or something like that without him changing levels or without him taking the fight in an approach where it's not advantageous for Rodriguez. Will he be successful in that pursuit here or is Yair going to be too unpredictable? No, I think Alexander Volkanovsky is going to stick to the game plan. And we saw it, like you said, in all those fights, we've seen him do it. This guy is good at managing range. He knows how to not get tagged at range and then when to enter on the takedowns. Does it to perfection. That's why it's hard to discount him at that minus 420 favorite because this dude is very well-rounded and very smart. So it's, it's, it's an upward battle for Yair. But what Yair does have is the kicks. Yeah. You know, you want to shut down somebody who's coming at you, put a teep kick right up the middle, right up their face, let them know that's going to be there all night long. 
Well, Konofsky is a little shorter. What's the height? 5'6 to 5'11. So, you know, you have some of that. Maybe get him in tight clinch. Yair working the knees up the middle, the uppercuts. The thing is, though, I don't... We've seen that year throw uppercuts. I mean, we've seen him throw an upward elbow. But I wouldn't say he's more much of a practitioner throwing things up the middle like that. Would you, Derek? I know. I don't think he's a pure boxer. You know what I mean? I think that uh-huh. his, his best weapons are the kicks and the weird angles that they come from. So that's what I was going to say. Reach-wise, I mean, if you look on numbers, Volkanovski has a half an inch reach advantage, but Yair Rodriguez's reach comes in those legs. So, you know, it's not PFL. They don't do leg reach um, in the UFC. I just think that that's the, where the battle is going to be interesting. Volk does a really good job of pulling opponents into his strikes, using his footwork to dictate where the fight takes place. Yair, on the other hand, is really good at hitting you where you cannot hit him back. So Volkanovski, though, he's not applauding Josh Emmett where he's just going to throw the big right hand or throw the big bomb or whatnot. Volk is going to touch you, kick the legs up, try to beat up the legs, take away that mobility, and then might wrestle with you just to say, like icing on the cake right here. We could talk X's and O's all day in regards to this matchup, but we have to take a couple other intangibles um, into account as well. It looks like... I don't know, man. It looks like a very steep battle for Yair Rodriguez to overcome right here. But I don't know if I feel comfortable with the Alexander Volkanovsky finish, given that he's been heavily decision wins in his title run. I think he needs to build a statement. But if you also take into account Volkanovsky's talking about after this fight, I'm moving back up to 155 to fight Makashev for the rematch. You might think he wants to get out of this one as unscathed as possible. I think I like Alexander Volkanovsky with the decision right here. He's creeping real close to, to beating that Shevchenko title uh, uh, defense record right there, bro. So give me Volk. Give me a decision, baby. How are you seeing it? I like that, Derek, especially because if you're looking to finish Yair Rodriguez, that's when you put yourself in danger. And I don't see Volk putting himself in that danger unless absolutely necessary. So I'm with you. Decision, Volkanovsky. Give me that 125. And this isn't going to be the end of Yair Rodriguez, but I will say that this is going to be another reminder and another litmus test to, hey, there's like Volk, there's Holloway, and then there's everybody else. And we need to fall in line a little bit, but who knows? We'll see. All right, that is title fight number one right there.